Welcome to our weekly podcast. Today we're going to be talking about diabetes. We're going to talk about glucose and insulin, diabetes and insulin resistance, how medications work in your body, side effects, and managing your medications. There are two types of diabetes. First is type 1 diabetes, where the body makes little to no insulin and will always have to supplement the body with insulin in this case. These are insulin-dependent diabetics. Type 2 diabetics may still make some insulin, but not enough in response to the amount of sugar in their blood. In some cases, it's possible that the body no longer efficiently uses the insulin that we make. Blood sugar levels should range, if we're fasting, anywhere from 70 to 130, or two hours after a meal, anywhere below 180 is a good blood sugar range. Whether you're new to diabetes or have been living with it for a long time, there's three basic ways we're able to control the amount of blood sugar in the body. It's commonly called the three-legged stool approach. The three legs of the stool represent healthy eating, exercise, and medications. You'll notice that two of the three legs of the stool, diet and exercise, are controlled by you. Each leg of the stool is just as important as the other, but today we'll be discussing one of the legs in more detail, and that is medications. Before we start talking about how diabetes medications work, it's important to understand how diabetes acts in your body. Today we'll talk a lot about the two key players in diabetes, insulin and glucose. Insulin is made naturally by your pancreas, and in a healthy body, insulin binds to the cells in your muscles to signal glucose to come inside the cell. Glucose then receives the signal and enters the cell where it can be used as energy. So let's take a closer look at how this signaling works. In a body without diabetes, the insulin first binds to the muscle cell. Insulin then sends a signal through the cell to glucose. Let's think of this signal like a cell phone call. Insulin picks up the phone and calls glucose to tell him to come inside the cell. In a healthy body with no diabetes, the cell signal is very good, so glucose receives the call. Glucose can then enter the cell and be used by the body for energy. If glucose is in the cell, it means there's less in the blood. That's why people without diabetes do not have high blood sugar. If you have diabetes, a number of things could be going wrong with the signaling process. The first is if the pancreas isn't making enough insulin. In this case, the insulin never binds to the muscle cell to call the glucose. Since the call is never made, glucose remains outside of the cell and in the bloodstream. With so much glucose in the bloodstream, you have high blood sugar. If you have diabetes, it's possible that something else is going on in your body called insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is when plenty of insulin is being made, but it doesn't get used correctly. This is the cause of diabetes in many type 2 diabetics. To understand how the insulin glucose signaling process is interrupted in insulin resistance, first we have to talk about what having insulin resistance actually means. Insulin resistance is caused by eating too many carbohydrates. When you eat a large amount of carbohydrates, fatty acids are stored in parts of your body where they're not normally kept. If you have insulin resistance, these fatty acids are being stored in your muscle cells liver, fat tissue, and more. As you can see here, this cell is full of free fatty acids. This is what interrupts the insulin glucose signal in many people with diabetes. In insulin resistance, there's plenty of insulin to bind to the muscle cell. Often there's way too much insulin in the blood. By testing an insulin level, your doctor can tell if you're insulin resistant. If you look at the screen, you can see that insulin binds to the muscle cell and makes the call to glucose to tell him to come in the cell. However, the muscle cell is packed full of free fatty acids, and this interrupts the signal. The signal never makes it to glucose. If glucose doesn't get the message to come into the cell, again, he stays in the blood, causing high blood sugar. Now that we know two different things that could be happening in your body to cause diabetes, let's talk about the medications that you're taking and how they work. Medications are like tools in a toolbox. Every tool has a specific purpose and can be used in different ways. In the same way, medications your doctor gives you have a specific purpose. They may work great for you, but not for your neighbor, or vice versa. Medications can work to decrease blood sugar levels in three different ways. One is making more insulin. Two is enhancing the signal insulin sends to glucose. And three is by decreasing the amount of glucose made by the liver. 
There are many different medications that increase insulin production in the body. Glipizide, gliburide, and glimepiride work to increase the amount of insulin that your pancreas makes. Your body also makes a hormone that tells the pancreas to make more insulin. Genuvia and Onglyza work by keeping the hormone around in the body longer. The injections Bietta and Victoza work by making more of this hormone. All seven of these different medications work to make more insulin. If there's more insulin in the bloodstream, there's a better chance that the signal will make it all the way through to the cell, despite all the free fatty acids. Instead of a small amount of insulin starting to call to send glucose a message, you now have a whole lot of insulin shouting to try to get the message to glucose. Again, when glucose receives the message correctly, it can go inside the cell and lower our blood sugar. There can be side effects related to medications that work to make more insulin in the body. Glipizide, gliburide, and glimepiride are medications called sulfonylureas. Since these medications make more insulin all by themselves, the biggest side effect seen is hypoglycemia, or low blood sugar. Since Genuvia, Onglyza, Bietta, and Victoza work on the hormone, you will not get low blood sugar with them. However, they do have their own side effects. As we mentioned before, there's three different ways that diabetes medications work in your body. When you have insulin resistance, you already have a lot of insulin in your blood. So sometimes it's better to try and help the insulin glucose signaling process without making more insulin. The medications Actos and Avandia work to fix insulin resistance without making more insulin. They do this by enhancing the signal that insulin sends. With a strong signal, the message can make it through the fatty acids and be received by glucose. Just like before, as soon as glucose the message, he enters the cell. Actos and Avandia work by decreasing the amount of glucose and insulin in your blood. Some of you may have seen commercials about the side effects of Actos and Avandia, so let's talk about them. Some of the common side effects are weight gain, ankle swelling, and a decrease in effectiveness of birth control. But the most severe side effect of these medications is the risk of heart failure in some people. Because of this, Avandia is no longer available. However, Actos is still used today and is safe in all patients that have not experienced heart failure. The third way that diabetes medications can work is by making less glucose. As all of you know, most of the glucose in your blood comes from carbohydrates that you eat. However, while you're sleeping, your liver does make a small amount of glucose to make sure you don't wake up with low blood sugar. A medication that is used often in type 2 diabetes is metformin, and metformin works by telling the liver to stop making glucose. Again, metformin, just like any other drug, has its own set of side effects. And when you're on metformin, your doctor will be watching your kidneys to make sure they are also working well. I hope that you all know how the medications that you are taking work in your bodies to help lower your blood sugar. Not only is it important that you know how your medicine works and what side effects to look for, it's also important that you keep your medicine straight and take it properly. Most people with diabetes take about six to eight different medications every day. That is hard to keep straight. To help you keep them straight, you can use a pill box, an alarm to remind you, a calendar, or you can also use our helpful refill reminder program. If you have a hard time remembering to take your medications, talk to us about other solutions we have to offer. Although we've spent all of our time today talking about medications, it's important to remember the three-legged stool theory. In order to manage your diabetes, we use all three legs of the stool together. If you have insulin resistance, it's very important that you eat a low-carbohydrate diet and exercise, as well as taking medications. In, let's review for a moment. Insulin resistance is caused by eating too many carbohydrates. Diabetes medications work to help the insulin glucose signal, and medications are only one part of your diabetes management. Please be sure to talk to us if you have any questions about today's podcast or your diabetes management. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>